We are here in Cape Town holding our first and only meeting of the uh, NEF uh, Scientific Program Committee and uh, I am very pleased to welcome here to uh, this conversation one of our distinguished and most youthful members of the, of the committee, Dr. Solomon Asefa. Welcome, Solomon. Thank you very much. Tell us a little bit about your, uh, your background, yourself, your, your origins, your scientific background, and uh, how you got to be part of the NEF. So I was, uh, my name is Solomon, as you mentioned, and I was born and raised in Ethiopia. I left at a very young age when I was 16 uh, because I got a scholarship to go to MIT. And I stayed there for uh, quite many years. I never left because I did my bachelor's, master's as well as PhD. And I was very much interested in doing research, you know, hardcore uh, fundamental research. And once I completed my PhD, I actually joined IBM Research as a scientist uh, or as a research staff member, where I did some fundamental work in physics. And finally, actually, uh, after completing the fundamental work, did a prototype and then finally commercialized the technologies that we developed. And uh, after that, I, was, uh, I became a director for IBM Research and I was, uh, I'm now in Johannesburg uh, exploring how we can set up a lab as well as uh, figuring out the research strategy for IBM. And this will be the second effort because the first effort was actually in Nairobi, Kenya, where we already have a lab uh, functioning with 25 PhDs and research scientists. Oh, congratulations on such a rich uh, academic path that you followed. You know, uh, did you say uh, you patented or you sold one of your products? Yes, well, I have more than 40 patents, and that's something that you learn when you leave, uh, you know, your country and go to get uh, some education and really understand how fundamental science works and also how you translate fundamental science into realistic products that are, you know, that consumers can use. So that allows you to really understand the, you know how you take fundamental science all the way to technology. Just so our young audience uh, who, are, who might be inspired by your example have a, a better appreciation of what you mean. In the US uh, we know that patent means uh, holding a stake in the use of those products which might mean uh, uh, you know uh, very lucrative uh, projects. So uh, your scientific career has given you quite a, a good life that can inspire many others coming after you. Well, I was actually seriously interested in the fundamental understanding, the physics of, you know, life and things. That's, once you actually have that fundamental understanding, there's a lot much that comes out of that. And I think the focus has to be on really getting that fundamental scientific understanding, which ultimately leads into patents and other lucrative kind of, you know, avenues. Very good. So focus on, this, on, on the science, yes. do the research pay your dues, produce the good results, and they will pay out big time. And research means, you know, developing your ability to ask tough questions. And, and once you do that in, in the science area, it's actually very much interesting how that translates into other areas, be it finance, banking, or any other area. So the most important thing is to really develop your scientific abilities to ask tough questions, uh, for which you might have no answer, actually, you know, just even really articulating questions is very, very important. What would you say to a young African who aspires to really do solid fundamental research, doing beyond what you have done? Who might want to become the next Einstein, so to speak? You're absolutely right in the sense that not everybody gets that opportunity, right? But at the same time, Africa is really evolving. The demographics is changing, our economy, you know, uh, the social economic situation is changing as well. So I'm very, very confident that more opportunities will come uh, to their way. But at the same time, we also have to understand that the way education is given to people is changing. I mean, there's a lot of content that's available online. Now there's a question whether or not everyone has availability to online access, but that's happening. Slowly but surely that will happen. So we have to understand also that, you know, the means of education how people get content is changing, and as much as possible, uh, young people have to try hard to you know, look at education from a very different perspective. Yes, there's education in the classroom, but what more can they learn when they go out of the classroom? You know, how do they work with their friends and their you know, mentors and supporters to have access, you know, even outside of the classroom, so that they have a unique type of education? And they also have to really be innovative on, again, the type of questions that they ask, and then after that, go out of their way to make an effort to connect to people who can help them, you know, get that content. So there are many ways, but uh, 
in a sense also it's not just about waiting from your school or your professors or from your government, it's about the personal effort that you put into you know, getting answers to the questions that you're asking. So more like uh, the, their dreams, their ambitions and their discipline and how they organize their lives yes. to actually pursue whatever yeah. they have in mind to pursue. Yes, they have to it's dream, yeah, they have to dream big and always be careful that they nev never ever let anyone else kill their dream. So, so how do you see this uh, large tech companies coming to Africa. Pre previously, many companies, you know, uh, before the tech, the, the, the tech uh, era, many companies come sell products in Africa. Now, the new companies want to actually come and set up shop in Africa. Now, how do you see them setting up shop in Africa to sell their products as opposed or maybe for their own profit and uh, um, 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 outlook to actually train Africans, create even their own technical universities or institutions, whatever they may be, in Africa that might actually help them get the local manpower to develop the next kind of products that would give them profitability. So IBM is unique when it comes to this point actually because first of all, okay, fine, IBM research has a very, very bold research agenda which is, it's not about, you know, just being in the US or Europe or anywhere else. It's about focusing on big challenges for humanity. That's one thing that makes us very, very unique. We have 3,000 scientists who are really working on very, very fundamental science. And this go from mathematicians to engineers, computer scientists, even, you know, people working on astronomy and brain science and so forth. So that gives us a very, very broad portfolio to really have a big impact on the world. The other major thing that uh, IBM Research is doing is actually saying the world is our lab. It's not about doing research at some big you know, corporate headquarters. It's about going to the places where there are opportunities and challenges, right? So that's why we have you know, 12 labs all around the globe. And the newest lab that we have set up is actually in Nairobi, Kenya. So we wanted to come to the continent because we've realized that we really need to engage with the local ecosystem. We need to work with entrepreneurs, professors, government officials, everybody on the continent to define the challenges together and then figure out you know, strategically how to tackle those scientific challenges. So you have to, it's not just about selling products, it's actually coming in and working on the challenges that are important. That's one aspect of it. And the second aspect is, of course, you have to be involved in skills training locally. If you want to have impact, you, know, you have to attract local talent you know, who are much better suited to tackle those challenges. People locally who can come and create the next new products, right? So that's, that has been our strategy. It's not just about coming and really you know, selling products that have been made somewhere else, but which, by the way, many of those products might not suit you know, in terms of, be suitable in terms of solving the grand challenges that we have or, you know, tackling the problems that we have or they might not be suitable for even addressing the opportunities that exist. So you have to look at them from a very, very different perspective. So uh, one, one last point here, Solomon. You've participated in this meeting today and you've been part of the rich conversation that we've had in setting up the agenda for the NEF. What impressed you most or what do you hope most to come out of the NEF, uh, the first forum that will hold next year in Senegal? I think the one exciting thing that, that I'm hoping for is again, you know, goosebump science as we have called it, which is, you know, having many speakers who are going to be inspiring the next, uh, you know, big scientist, the next Einstein. I think there, there will be a lot of conversations on that. And at the same time, bringing in young talent so that they will be able to have influence on policy makers, you know, these young scientists coming in, defining the agenda making some very, very good points which will really have impact on what's going to happen for the coming decade or more. So I'm very much excited about the outcome of the NEF. Very good.